Hello everyone and welcome back to this new edition of Beyond the Board. We've got Sam of Ace and Twinkachu here from the Jet Set Radio Future community. So how would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Seven Ace. I do a lot of the bingo playing. Also, I'm involved with being a modder slash nerd of JSRF who reverse engineers the game and occasionally, and by occasionally I mean twice a year, does an actual speed run of the game. I am Twinkachu. I'm also an any percent runner in theory, but I haven't done an any percent run in a while. And I'm a big fan of bingo, and I run the JSRF community's bingo tournament. So how have you guys gotten into JSRF speedrunning? So I started speedrunning in 2013 with Portal Inbounds. Played some other games and eventually picked up Jet Set Radio Future in 2017 after remembering the ridiculously good soundtrack that it has. And then going and YouTubing up some speedruns for it. And then following them to Twitch streamers into, oh my god, four and a half years later, I'm still playing this game from 2002. What am I doing with my life? But also, it's been a fantastic thing, so. I'm newer to the speedrunning scene about a year ago an irl friend of mine got really into running the game and so i kind of watched him learn the game on streams and stuff and then i saw ace and another member of our community actually preparing for bingathon and i thought oh this is really cool like i actually came to bingo before i came to speedrunning weirdly enough and then through there i just got more involved in the community and started running the game what are the, like, the aspects of Jet Set Radio Future that are your favorites? For me, as I think one review of it put, it's a freedom of movement. Jet Set Radio Future is an open world game for the most part, and in the way we play it in Bingo, it is that in its truest sense. And it's really, really a lot of fun to be able to move around the areas that they have designed specifically for good movement in optimal ways. It is genuinely the most satisfying part of the game, and I highly recommend it. There's a near unlimited cap for how much cool stuff you can do in the game. It's also, it's got just a movement system that's really, really satisfying to get a good hold on. Like when you play it casually, it's kind of awkward and you're like, ah, what am I doing? And then as you get a better grasp of how the movement works and start to do really cool like movement tricks, it's just such a satisfying experience. How did you get into bingos? Well, I suppose we already know for Twinkle Choo since that's how you got started in the first place. But yeah. what what about you, Seventh Ace? So a person that you may wink wink know, Panda.rar, created Jet Set Radio Future bingos originally back in late 2018. And originally it was based off of just a new game where you complete goals and whatnot, starting from the new game screen and playing through it more in a speedrun sense. And then the save file modders of the time, which were me and Demo, created a save file where everything was available to be played instantly, and there are no story events around the levels, but everything could still be done. And that led us into our current iteration of Bingo, where it plays in more of an open world sense. And that really has taken off in the community as being the preferred way to play, really the only way to play. Nobody plays, like, new game bingos. And so that really was the start of Jet Set Radio Future bingos. You already mentioned that movement is something that makes the game really fun to run in general, but when it comes to the bingos themselves, what is it that really makes it fun for you? One of the things that stands out about bingo to me is the pacing. It's so much faster paced than like an any percent run. Our any percent world record is somewhere in the hour and a half-ish range. A 1v1 bingo game takes like half an hour. A 2v2 takes even less. You're always doing something. You're always trying to think like four steps ahead. It's chaotic in the most entertaining way possible. What do you think then about the execution aspects of playing bingo? I believe we have, I need to just not think on this, about 140 different goals that can come up in any board of 25. So you do have to have a large breadth of information and skills to be able to do things. So the execution requirements come down to three general categories. One being 
pure inherent movement getting from point A to point B, either across a level or across multiple levels very quickly, or to one of the collectibles, which are graffiti souls in the game. There is the unlocking or knowing the maps to being able to utilize your movement effectively. And then third is our longer goals that we'll eventually talk about later, which are full level clear routes, essentially. And those require a whole different set of information that requires knowing the entire level from front to back where all 50 objectives are and being able to do it optimally. Because again, seconds matter so very often in Jet Set Radio Future Bingo. Those are the real facets of execution that make it so exciting. You can take routing and make it really neat and everything, talking about decisions, but watching people go through with so many different styles and strategies to getting through individual levels is really, really cool. This is one of my favorite things about JSRF Bingo, actually, because there are so many possibilities for routes you can take through areas. Like, any movement trick we've ever discovered has the potential to be viable. Bingo really rewards just knowing a ton of super random and otherwise completely useless movement tricks in a bunch of the levels. Yep, there's a specific one in the sewers that I like where you do a hand plant to get extra height so you can skip part of the level. The sewers, notoriously from anybody who's played Jet Set Radio Future, is an extremely vertical level and it's extremely punishing if you fall, but the bingo experts of the area are really good at being able to mitigate a ton of the obnoxious platforming that can exist and all of a sudden just take this level and turn it into a really, really fun experience. So that's my personal favor of tricks that can be done. We've seen in previous bingo thons that the counting system for the bingo points is a bit uh, special. Would you care to explain how it works? So every square is worth one point to start. But because Jet Set Radio Future has either quick collectible goals or ridiculously long clear everything goals and very little in between, we went ahead and changed up the point system such that the long goals are worth three points per square. So our collectibles, our character unlocks, and our graffiti souls are all worth one point. And our graffiti routes, which are full level clears of 50 or more things, count as three points. And it creates this interesting dynamic where suddenly certain objectives become more or less available in the early part of run or the early part of a bingo game versus the later half. And it plays with the strategy you could play more graffiti heavy and try and get extra points through that if you feel confident in that. Or you can try and gather a lot of graffiti souls, which is more of a like board control, accumulate a lot of points, maybe grab some bingos along with it. In addition, we reward bingos with three additional points. And what this does is makes really exciting moments in games where you can see a three or four in a row building and you can either work to block the three and four in a row, which creates convergence of the players to go to the same location which creates really cool spectator moments, or you can have them break off and try and get a counter bingo to gather those additional points as well. And we think just by watching this, it's created a lot of really, really exciting, powerful moments when playing the game that really, I think, create some of the best moments in JSRF bingos, watching people compete for the same squares because they're so important. What is it for you that constitutes a fun and engaging goal in the context of a JSRF against one that you think might need some rebalancing, for example? There are certain goals that are just completely unviable at the start of games because they're just not worth enough points. Some of the longest graffiti routes in the game take upwards of nine minutes, and that's when it's done perfectly. Overall, that's kind of just part of the learning curve is learning what is viable earlier versus later and when it's correct to go for something longer earlier in the run. There's also part of the strategy is like trying to force your opponent into having to do some of these harder goals. Like, oh, if I threaten a bingo in this row, I force my opponent into having to do this really terrible objective while well, I can go do something else that will earn me more points. Do you think uh, it's actually a good thing to intentionally have quote-unquote bad goals on your card rather than constantly work to only have good goals. 
I do not have experience with just 13 square lockout games, so please correct me if I'm wrong. But a lot of times, no matter what, if you're playing like a first to 13 lockout style where there's no extra points around there somewhere, it often will just get left unplayed or begrudgingly done at some point for the final square. But I think because the board is so dynamic and there are different scoring values and different incentives for scoring bingos and things like that, I think having those moments where the quote-unquote bad goals shine as the correct decision of what to do to maximize your score is one of the shining moments of the whole thing is making the bad goals good when most people would not think of it. Something that I'm curious to know more about is in terms of the mentality behind routing and specifically aspects of it that people might not usually think of, especially for beginners. Do they have, for example, any mistakes in the thought process specifically behind routing that can damage a beginner's progress? I created a video uh, a month or two ago of the five facets of JSR Bingo, which are the knowledge, the movement, single level routing, multi-level routing, and then even wider is bingo strategy as a whole. It takes all five of those to be good at Jetson Radio Future Bingo. And no single player is the best at more than like one or two of those. So there are a lot of different facets and it starts off for a lot of new players with just finding what goals are easy and getting them done early or something like that. And that's a good starting point, but very quickly, after maybe a competitive start with good players or teams, you'll see that they tend to fall off because the good players then have a better follow-up strategy of where to go next. The other thing that I kind of notice with newer players is that lots of them just gravitate towards the quote-unquote easy areas rather than areas that have a lot of stuff in them. New players get really intimidated by the areas they're less familiar with, and so they'll commit to doing like the first level you do in any percent, even if it only has one or two goals, rather than rushing out to some of the harder like sides of the board to get more things. I don't know how much this would apply considering the difference of your system, because usually something I would ask is what kind of factors make you think this is the kind of row I want to go for or this is the row I, I do not want to go for. But I suppose uh, this would be more of um, how do you know yeah. what the hell you're doing, basically? <laughs> yeah. So at the start of every game, we actually have a one minute strategizing time. And we found that this actually greatly improved games because games are blitz fast off the start and seconds matter. The first 60 seconds can sometimes just make or break a game before we implemented it. And it led to really strange scenarios where people were trying to read the board and then stood around doing nothing because it's too hard to move to an area and read the board and find everything immediately. So you've got the opening and once the opening happens, you take whatever squares that exist and come up with your mid game plan. Do you try and based on how the beginning has gone, do you try and win or go for a bingo? Do you try and grab more squares? Do you try and win with a graffiti route or something? Or do you try and pin your opponents into a bad decision? And this is where the greatest routing decisions come into play is in this mid game state. And then once those mid game plans either work or don't work, you run towards the end game when there are only maybe five or less squares on the board. And then you count up your points and say, okay, based on this game state, what of these five squares do I need to win? I know other like game modes, I guess, like other kinds of bingos really incentivize like picking a row and just committing to that bingo right away. And in JSRF, in order to do that, you need like a really, really specific kind of board generation and also for the other team to not notice the bingo at all. Like if you commit to a bingo right away, it rarely goes to plan. What would you say is the barrier for entry for people who are interested in picking up a uh, JSRF Creative Future bingos? And have you got any advice for them? Yeah, so honestly, the barrier for entry is a little massive. Like, you have to know where all of the collectibles in the game are, and how to unlock them, and like how to navigate all of the levels, which isn't something any percent will teach you. And so once you've got that and like the basics of movement tech, you also kind of have to have a grasp on like how we play bingo, like the strategy and the meta behind it. And you pick that up as you play, but starting out is kind of an overwhelming experience. Like, the best way to learn is really just to play a lot. 
one thing we have found is that this 2v2 format works pretty well with where our community's at now. We have kind of a smaller group of people who have a lot of bingo experience, and then a group of people who have no bingo experience but are interested in learning. And so being able to play on a team with an experienced player who can kind of walk you through their strategy makes that starting out a little less overwhelming. Do you think quote unquote normal speedrunners could benefit from doing bingos in some way in the context of Jet Set Radio Future, especially when it comes to runners who run categories that don't explore the game to its fullest, such as any percent? Yes, do something that's not any percent. You will be better at this game. My goodness, <laughs> it's so much better overall. You can actually learn backups. Find what you like in this game. I'm not going to say you must play the bingo, but there are advantages to at least trying it out. Yeah, uh, bingo gives you like a good sampler of everything that all of the kinds of speedruns have to offer. Like you get to try out all of the areas and you get to try out all of the like longer format things in the game like soul hunting and like graffiti. Bingo helps you figure out what to do when you run into trouble. It helps you figure out backups and stuff that you just never encounter if you only run any percent. A lot of new runners feel a lot of pressure to like, I have to do the perfect thing. I'll, like, I have to do the optimal route. And I was way more comfortable with like, yeah, this works. I'll do this. <laughs> I am way more of the belief that it is more valuable to know a lot of things about the game than like to start out by just grinding the hardest trick for hours on end. Yeah. Learning the basics of the game will help you so much more when you do inevitably try to learn the hard tricks. How do you think the community can further support bingos then? Especially considering you've got the tournament starting up uh, really soon. You can catch all of the tournament stuff at twitch.tv forward slash JSRF bingo. That is where all of the stuff happens. Have you got any final words you'd like to say to the community and everyone? Well, since we're uh, speaking mainly to the bingo community here, if you're interested, check us out. We do submit to Bingathon fairly often. We have a lot of fun matches that we like to put on for people. We spend lots of time preparing and making sure that everybody is good to go. And we've got lots of prepared commentary so you can follow what's going on and whatnot. So check out some of our old Bingathon VODs or again, the ones on uh, twitch.tv slash JSRF. And by the time you're watching it, JSRF Bingo. Uh, so all of those should be pretty exciting. And for anybody interested at the end of this, you can hit us up. Uh, we don't have a public link for the JSRF Bingo Discord yet, but it will probably exist yeah. eventually, trademark. And our speedrunning hub at jsrfspeedruns.com will get you started. Yeah, if you're interested in Bingo, just like track down our speedrunning community and someone will point you the right way. <laughs> All right, I want to say first off, thank you so much for being here. We've definitely had a lot of fun here. Uh, I really enjoyed it. If you are watching now in video format, definitely do make sure to check out the full article, which will contain the full interview, because there's definitely been a lot we covered that couldn't possibly make it to the final video. So I urge you definitely do so. Definitely make sure to give a follow to both 7th Ace and Twinkichu and to also give a follow to the JSRF Bingo Twitch channel for the tournament that will be just about to start at the time of recording. Thank you everyone and we'll be seeing you on the next Beyond the Board. Bye! Bye!